The low pass filter in a lock in amplifier is one of the key elements defining measurement performance. Finding the best settings for your application is crucial but can be time consuming. I'm Claudius and together we will go through a process to find the best configuration for your lock in measurement. Let's recap why is the low pass filter so important? It defines the measurement bandwidth and noise. Therefore, the filter settings makes often the difference between excellent measurements and average ones. The low pass filter is defined by two parameters, bandwidth and order. The bandwidth indicates the cutoff frequency and is inversely related to the time constant. Lower bandwidths give more signal to noise ratio but increase the acquisition time. The order indicates how many identical filters are cascaded. The larger this number, the steeper the roll-off. This leads to stronger rejection of unwanted frequencies but to longer settling times. Let's have a look at the two most common measurement situations to see how to correctly choose those two parameters. First, we consider applications where the critical constraint is the measurement time, for instance in scanning imaging. The step responses of filters with the same bandwidth but different order illustrate the various settling characteristics. They depict the settling time it takes to reach a fraction of the new value. Lower orders start settling faster but approach the final value slower than higher orders. To measure the new value with an accuracy of up to 71%, the best choice to achieve maximum signal to noise ratio is a first order filter, up to 95% a second order and to 99% a third order, and so on. In a final step, we choose the bandwidth based on the given measurement time and on the factor linking accuracy, filter order and time constant. In the second situation, where we have a more complex spectral background, we select the filter parameters considering the frequency domain. The bandwidth needs to be broad enough to accommodate all spectral components to be measured, but small enough to avoid excessive noise. For example, if you want to observe a 10 Hz amplitude modulation of your signal, the filter bandwidth needs to be at least that large. In case there are spurious signals nearby, they will interfere with your measurement. The filter order adds a degree of freedom to the settings. With a higher order, a broader bandwidth can be selected while keeping the unwanted frequency suppressed. In addition, the higher filter order will provide a better signal-to-noise ratio for the same bandwidth at the expense of longer measurement times. The tip so far will help you to choose good settings in most cases. But there are still a few pitfalls to avoid in certain situations. First, higher order filters introduce a delay in the signal propagation, which can lead to instabilities when used in feedback loops such as tracking the phase in a PLL. In these cases, lower order filters are always advisable. Care should also be taken when working with low demodulation frequencies. In this case, even relatively small filter bandwidths may lead to leakage of the DC and the harmonics, because they are not sufficiently suppressed. In order to keep this in check, higher order filters may be required. Alternatively, an easy-to-enable sync filter suppresses the higher harmonics. There you have it. These tips will help you to find the crucial settings for your low-pass filter without wasting time. If you have a more complex situation, get in touch. We'll be happy to help. Thank you for watching.